<clears throat> Hello everyone and welcome back to our ritual Mr. Bruish here. It's good to be back after a little bit of a break, but we, <laughs> we're going to have to try to make up for some lost ground. We'll give it a shot. I don't think we're going to catch up, uh, cover any extra ground today, but so be it. So we left off in Simon Lamed Bays. We're on Nun Hey Ahmed Aleph. We left off in the midst of Simon Lamed Bays, Simon Mem Dalit. Now, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Five lines up from the bottom of Nun He Amid Aleph. I'm going to cover one halacha that we already covered in the most, in the latest shir. I'm not going to do the Mishtabur on it, but just for the sake of continuity, I'm going to read from five lines up from the bottom, uh, near the beginning of the line, the word Yegalgel. The Mechaber told us, Yegalgel Kol Parsha. We have written the parsha, the parshiyos of the tefillin, and now we want to insert the parshiyos of the tefillin into the bottom, into the four individual bottom of the shel roish. Says the mechaber. First thing you do is yigalgel kol parsha misayif alutchilasa. We roll up each parsha and we roll it from the end of the parsha to the beginning, so that right when we open the parsha, we're at the beginning of the parsha and we're ready to read the parsha. So if we're rolling up, let's say, the parsha of Shema, right, that's Shema Yisrael and Ve'ohavta, we roll it up from the end of the parsha to the beginning, so that right when you open it, the first word, the top line first word, is going to be Shema. Okay. V'karcham beklaf katan. Then the Mechaber told us, once we have the parsha rolled up, what we then do is we take a small strip of klaf, blank cloth, and we wrap the rolled up parsha in blank cloth. Now many of you are trying to visualize this, and what you're visualizing in your mind is kind of like a mezuzah. You're visualizing a cylinder of cloth, right? A roll. Don't visualize it that way because that's not actually the way we do it. We do it so that it's flat. We kind of not just roll it, but fold it. I have a, a, a strip here of folded up parchment, uh, folded up paper that we're going to use later. But you see how this is folded. It's not just rolled. It's rolled, but it's rolled very tight so that it's flat. And then we could slide it up into the bias. Now, when it's flat like this, what we do is we take a small strip of cloth. Let's see if I could just uh, illustrate that. Quickly, I don't have a scissor handy, but no need. I'll just fold this up a little. And we'll use this for our show and tell. Imagine we have over here a small strip of cloth. And here we have the Parsha. What we do is we take a small strip of cloth and we wrap the small strip of cloth around the Parsha. That's what the Mechaber is saying over here. He says that we wrap the rolled up Parsha with a strip of cloth. He brings down over here from the smack that there are those that are makbid that that small strip of cloth that you're going to use to wrap the Parsha, it should be the cloth taken from a kosher species of animal. Okay, now that already, that halacha we already covered in the previous year. This is where we were up to. Let's go weiter. The halacha l'mayshemisinai. Now there is an additional halacha l'mayshemisinai that comes into play. Sheyikreich aleha sar behema aichaya hatahirim. There's a halacha l'mayshemisinai that tells us that when we wrap the parsha, we do not only wrap the parsha with a strip of cloth. We also wrap the parsha with sar, which literally means hair, with the hair of a kosher species of animal. He says a behema or a chaya tohirim, either a domesticated animal like a cow or a chaya like a deer. We take the hair or a sinew of a kosher species of animal and we wrap the cloth with that as well. Now, before we see the Mishtabura, let's take a look here at the Ramo. Hagah, the Ramo says, V'noyagin, our minigiz, likroich se'ar al ha'parsha. 
Our minig is to first wrap the parsha with this seyar, with this hair. Then we take a strip of cloth from a kosher, a species of animal, and we wrap the cloth around the parsha. And then we go ahead and we do another layer of seyar. So the Ramah, we had over here two, two different halachas in the Mechaber. And the Mechaber told us one halacha is that we have to wrap, wrap the parsha in a strip of cloth. A second halach is that we have to wrap the parsha in seyar, in here, of an animal. Says the Ramah, what we do is first we do seyar, then we do klaf, then we do another layer of seyar. Now, on that note, let's take a look here at the Mishtabura, beginning with Mishtabura's cut and rage ches. There's a halach that we have to wrap the parsha in seyar. Says the Mishtabura lochein, since this need, this requirement is based on Allah Lamaish Sinai, which is a Daraisa, in Karach Seyar Aleha, if you fail to wrap Seyar around the Parsha, Puzzle, the Tvilin would be Puzzle, Afshe Karach Aleha Klaf, even if you did wrap the Parsha with Klaf, if you neglected to wrap the Parsha with Seyar, it would be Puzzle. Ice Cotton Rage Tess, the Nayagid Likraich, the Minigiz, to wrap first seyar, then cloth, then seyar again. Why is that? Says the Chavetz Chaim. Ki yeshaymrim sheyikrei chaseyar al guf parsha Because there are those that say that the requirement is that the seyar should be wrapped directly onto the parsha. In that case, you can't first wrap it in cloth and then wrap it in seyar because then the seyar is not directly on the parsha. You have the cloth um, interceding between intervening between the seyar and the cloth. So to fulfill that requirement, to fulfill that opinion, we have to wrap the seyar directly on the parsha. lamala, and then, according to that shita, the cloth goes on top of the seyar. But there's also a shita that says, no, that the seyar is supposed to be on top of the cloth. So we found a way to be Mekayim both shitas. We wrap the seyar directly onto the cloth to fulfill the opinion that says that the seyar has to be directly on the cloth and on the parsha, and only then do you put on the cloth. So we put on the seyar first and then the cloth to fulfill the requirement of that opinion. Then we put seyar on top of the cloth to fulfill the opinion that says that the seyar has to be on top of the cloth. Now it seems to me that there's no shita that holds that the cloth has to be directly on the parsha. If there was, then we would have a problem. Even though I spoke to a cipher this morning who told me that there were some old cipher who what they would do is they would take seyar and they would wrap seyar around one side of the cloth. So let's say they would take seyar, I'm just going to make a little stripe on the cloth, on the parsha. Okay, let's say the, the line that I made over there, right? Let's say that's the seyar. So now you have seyar directly on the parsha. Then they would take cloth and they would wrap a strip of cloth on the other side of the parsha. So here you have seyar and the seyar is directly on the parsha. Here you have cloth. And then they would put a piece of cloth, a piece of seyar, they would wrap seyar over the strip of cloth so that to fulfill the opinion that the seyar has to be on top of the cloth. That's not the way we do it nowadays. What we seem to do nowadays is like the Mishnah says, we do seyar, then we do the cloth on top of the seyar, and then we do seyar on top of the cloth. Okay, now we go weiter in the Mechaber, two lines from the bottom. Venagu, the minigiz, Shaya Seyar Shel Egel. The minig is that this Seyar should come from a calf. The Imloi Matzah Shel Egel. If you can't get hold of the Seyar of an Egel, Kairech Bishel Para, then we should use Seyar from a cow, Oishel Shar, or from an ox. Says the Mishra is cut Reish Yud Shel Egel. Why would we Badafka use the Seyar of an Egel? Kadesh Yizkar might say Egel, so that when we put on the Twilin, it should serve as a remembrance. For the chait of the egel, v'lo yecheta, 
we should remember it and it should serve as a reminder that we should not sin. And also so that the tefillin should serve as a kapara for the cheto ego. Because of El Yoraba, the El Yoraba writes, the Mizar Tam that for this same reason, Toiv Lasso is called Tikin Tvilin Me or Ego. The entire Tvilin, says the El Yoraba, should be made from the hides of an Ego in order to be a Kapara for the Cheta Ego and Kide Lizkar as a Avain to remember the Cheta the Ego and so that we should protect ourselves from Chatoim. Ula Afuke Me Oisan Shaisen Ritsuis Me or Tayish. And the other rabbi seems to say that this stands in contrast to those, those who were noyeg to make the ritzuis from the hides of a goat. Now, your rabbi says, no, we should make everything from the ur of an ego. Now, what I found interesting about this is we know very often we say, ein kategor nasa sanegor. We always say that the prosecutor should not be used as a defense attorney. What does that mean? We don't want to use something that reminds the Rabbi Shalom of our Chatoim in something that's meant to stand for us as a schus. So, I mean, the first thing that's coming to my mind right now, even though there are certainly much better examples of it, is we know that there's a meaning not to wear gold of any kind in Yom Kippur, because that could stand as a remembrance to the Chet Ego. We don't want to come in front of the Rabbi Shalom on the Yom Adin, Ayyam Venoira wearing gold that could remind the Rabbi Shalom of the Chet Ego. Ain Kategor Nasa Sanegor. So, how is it over here that by the Tfilin we Badafka want to use Ur Ego? Why don't we say Ain Kategor Nasa Sanegor? And one of the things I was thinking is because over here by the Tfilin, it's not a problem of Ain Kategor Nasa Sanegor, quite the opposite. Over here by the Tfilin, it's Laman Tia Teras Hashem Beficha. Why do we wear Tfilin? We wear the Tfilin like my Rebbe, Zech uh, Tzadik Levracha, Rabbi Elias Schwartz, who was the Manal of Teresemes when I was a child. He used to say by every Bar Mitzvah when they put on Tfilin, the Tfilin should go into your mind and into your bloodstream. We're wearing the Tfilin so that the Tfilin we should become imbued with the Ruach of Torah. And Lamantia Teres Hashem Beficha, so that the Torah should be firmly emplaced in us. It is a remembrance. That's what the Tfilin is. So we're putting on tefillin, we're coming to Bari Olam, and we're, we're saying to the Rabbani Shalom, we know that we're at risk of hate. And that's why we're putting on tefillin. We're putting on tefillin to protect ourselves from hate. And Laman Tietaris Hashem Beficha. So Adarabah, we are doing whatever we can to remind ourselves and protect ourselves from hate. It's not that we're coming to the Rabbani Shalom and we're asking the Rabbani Shalom, we want this to be a schus. And we're giving the Rabbani Shalom a kategar. We're showing him the prosecutor and we're asking him to make it a defense attorney. This is for us, not for the Rabbani Shalom. And when he says over here that it should be a kapara for the Cheta Egel, I think he means the same thing. What he means is it should be a kapara. Why should it be a kapara? Because the kapara is, look Rabbani Shalom, we are coming to do Avedas Hashem and we're doing everything we can to protect ourselves from the Cheta Egel and that should stand for us as a kapar. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Says the Mechaber on the bottom line. This sayer of the behema that we're going to use to wrap the parshas of the tefillin, we should wash it well so that it should be clean. Continues the Mechaber. Kitsas sayer zeh a very minute amount of this here that is used to wrap around the parsha, tzarich sheyeireh chutz labatim, has to be visible on the outside of the bias of the tefillin. And I'm going to show you what that means. And first, I'm going to go, going to show it to you using my Rabbeinu Tam tefillin, because on my Rabbeinu Tam tefillin it is more noticeable. And then I'm going to show you how over here there's a great difference between Rabbeinu Tam tefillin. And Rashi tefillin. But first, I just want to show you what we're talking about. You can see very well on the camera over here, you see that little bit. I don't want to touch it with the point of the marker. I don't want to make it green. But over here, you see that? You see that here? I'll bring it up closer to the camera. There we go. You see that here over there? That is the Gidin. That is a tiny end of the sinews that 
inside the bias in here, that is wrapped around one of the parshias, and the end comes up through one of the holes in the bias, one of the holes in the titura for the tfiris, for the stitching. So inside it's wrapped around the parsha, happens to be it's wrapped around the parsha of Vahaya im Shamaya. That's the parsha, both by Rashi Tfilin and Rabbeinu Tam Tfilin. It's the, it's the sayer that's wrapped around the parsha of Vahaya im Shamaya. The very end of it, we push it up through the hole that's in the bias for the Tfiris. We push it up and it extends a tiny bit outward. Now, you can see it here on the Rashi Tfilin as well. But here, you see, there it is on the Rashi Tfilin. Oops, the camera's focusing on me, not on the bias. Uh, let's see if we can get it there. Okay, you could just make it out in the picture over there, that little white piece. That's the that's the little bit of Sayer. Okay, so the Mechaber said, Ketzas Sayer Zeh, a tiny bit of this Sayer, Tzarek Sheyei Raya Chutz Labatim, has to be visible on the exterior of the bottom. Says the Mishnah back on Nun Hey Amit Aleph, Ois Cotton Reish Yud Aleph, Ktas Seyar. I am a Magan of Rabbi, but the Ducha Rabbi Akivego Shehiskim, where they agree, Shehseyar, a Yoitse, a Pachas, a Yorah Seyra, that this little end of the Seyar should be less than the size of a barley corn. Reish Yud Beis, Chutz Labatim, it should extend up on the outside of the bottom of the Shalroish. Now the question is, precisely where should it be? Says the Mishnabur, Yesh Oymrim Shiyeh Eitzel Abayish and Munach by Parshas Kadesh. There are those that hold that this Seyar should come out of the bias next to the bias that contains the Parsha of Kadesh. The Yesh Oymrim Eitzel Vahaya Im Shamaya. But there are those that say that it should come out next to the bias that contains Vaya in Shamaya. So let's take my Rashi Tfilin over here. Here's my Rashi Tfilin. We know that the Tfilin have four bottom, and the four bottom contain four parshas. The first parsha is the parsha of Kadesh. Um, the second parsha is the parsha of Vahaya Kiviyacha. The third parsha is the parsha of Shema. And the final parsha is the parsha of Vahaya Im Shamaya. That's the halacha according to Rashi. So our Rashi tefillin, that's the way they are. We also know that which bias of the four batim is considered the first one. So we go by a person who's facing you, okay? So I'm wearing the, I'm wearing the bias over here. We don't go by my right. We go liyamin hakoire. We go to the right of somebody who's standing opposite me and looking at me. Right? So that's my left. So this bias over here, this is the first bias. So according to Rashi, this bias is Kadesh. This is Vahaya Kiyiviyacha. This is Shema. This is Vahaya Im Shamaya. And here we have a Machlaikis. Where should that piece of Seyar, which bias should it extend out of? I'm trying to catch the light. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the Mr. Brewer brings down one cheetah that says it should come out after the bias of Kadesh. So that would be over here. Let me do it this way, a finer point. That would be down here, after the bias of Kadesh. But there's another shita that says it should come out by the bias of Ahaya Im Shamaya. So what do we do? What we do is we take it out of the bias of Ahaya Im Shamaya but we do it on which side of the bias? You see, we could do it two ways. We could bring it up out here, okay, all the way at the end, on the outside of Vahaya Im Shamaya, or we could do it over here on the inside of Vahaya Im Shamaya. Says the Mishnah Brewer, we do it on the inside of Vahaya Im Shamaya so that it's closer to Kaddish, right? That's what we want. We want from Vahaya Im Shamaya, but closer to Kaddish. And here is where we wind up with another interesting difference between Rashi Tvilin and Rabbein Tam Tvilin. Because again, Rashi Tvilin, it's um, Kadesh, Vahayuki Yacha, Shema, Vahayim Shemaya. So the Seyar is here by Vahayim Shemaya towards Kadesh. That's Rashi Tvilin. But Rabbein Tam Tvilin is not that way. Rabbein Tam Tvilin is. 
Kadesh, Vahoyo ki Yacha, Vahoyo im Shamoya, Shema. So note that over here, see where the Seir is? Over here, the Seir is between Payishlishi and Payishani. Why? Because again, Kadesh, Vahoyo ki Yacha, Vahoyo im Shamoya. This third bias is Vahoyo im Shamoya. So we take the Seir out from Vahoyo im Shamoya on the side that's closer to Kaddish. Kaddish is over here. So on Rabbeinu Tam Trillin, you want to know how you can tell the difference between Rabbeinu Tam Trillin and Rashi Trillin just from looking at them? Here's how. In Rabbeinu Tam Trillin, the Seyar is going to be coming out between Bayesheni and Bayeshlishi. But in Rashi Trillin, it's going to be coming out between Bayeshlishi and Bayes Revi. So here you can have an interesting way to tell the difference between Rashi Tfilin and Rabbeinu Tam Tfilin. Let's see this inside over here again. Reish Yud Beis, Yesh Aymim Shiyeh Eitz Alabayi Shemunach by Parshas Kadesh. There are those that say that the Seyar should be extending next to the bias that contains Kadesh. V'yesh Aymim Eitz Alabayi Shemaya. But there are those that say that the Seyar should be extending outwards from the bias that contains Vaya Im Shemaya. The toiv, and therefore it's good that it should come out from the bias that contains volume shamaya on the side closer to the first bias that has kadesh. Okay, turning to nun hey amid bay sif mem hey top line in the mechaber. When we're ready to put the parshas up into the bottom, yitain kol parsha babayis shelo. We should insert each parsha into its bias. Shetei zekufa, it should be standing up, mu'umid, standing, bebesa, in its bias. So, let's take a look over here. I wrote this. Here, I just tried to make an example of a parsha that has all four parshas. This really would be, let's say, for a shalyad, not for a shalroish, right? Shalroish would be four individual parshas, Okay. But what the what the Mishnah Berurah what the Mechaber is telling us over here is when you're ready to insert the parsha up into the bias, it should go into the bias standing up. It shouldn't go in laying down. It should go in standing up. Zekufa Mo'umid bebeisa says the Mishnah Berurah is cut Rachel Gimel Zekufa Kiderech Kriasa. The way you would read it, right? You would read it standing up. That's the way you would read it top down. You don't read it sideways. Similar to the way we stand up a Sefer Torah in the Arab Kaidish. We don't lay the Sefer Torah down. We certainly don't put it upside down. We don't, but we don't lay it down on a shelf. We have it standing up because it's supposed to be in the way that it is read. If you put it in sideways, laying down, you wouldn't pass all the Tfilin because of this. Take a look at the Mug and Avram, who brings an interesting raya that the Tfilin have to be kosher if they're laying down, and we'll see that raya shortly. The near it would seem to become Okam Allah However, says the Mishnah certainly if you did put the parshas in laying down, since this is something that could easily be fixed, open up the bias, turn them around, stand them up straight. You should tzarech l'sakin, you have to fix them. Tahayinu sheyitziyem v'yanichem kahalacha. You have to take them out and you have to put them in the proper way. Now, I want to show you a very interesting shari tshuva over here because it brings out a very interesting point that I think I've made before, but I'm not sure. Take a look over here in the shari tshuva. <coughs> First line of the shari tshuva here on Nunheim and Beis, Ois Katan Samuk Zayin. He says, I am Be'er Hetev. He sends us to the Be'er Hetev. The Kasa B'noid of Yehuda Ba'adur Tinyana. He brings down a very interesting tshuva from the Noid of Yehuda who says, Da'av she Rabbeinu Tam Chaylek. Rabbeinu Tam is Chaylek on the Salacha. The Bechaber brings down over here and he brings it down from the Rosh and the Mardachai that the, the Parsha should be standing up. Says the Noid of Yehuda, Rabbeinu Tam does not agree. Usfir Lei Rabbeinu Tam Hol Shetia Shechebes. According to Rabbi Tam, he says that the parsha should be laying down. 
In the context of this halacha, we don't have to put on two pairs of tefillin. The shani seder hanachasan, the ikar of haigayim, the kamagayim, the kaimi bishitas rabbeinu tam, ayin shon. The, the, the point that I want to bring out over here is, yeah, I, I just, I lost myself over here for a second. What he's saying is like this. You see, we have Rabbeinu Tam Tefillin. These are my Rabbeinu Tam, Rabbeinu Tam Tefillin. Now, guess what? The parshas that are in this Rabbeinu Tam Tefillin are standing up. They're not laying down. And this is fascinating because Rabbeinu Tam holds that the parshas are supposed to be laying down. And even in Rabbeinu Tam Tefillin, we don't make them like Rabbeinu Tam. We have them standing up. And this is what the, the Shari Tshuva is saying over here. He says, You don't have to put on a second pair of tefillin that's made like Rabbeinu Tam where the parshas are laying down. I, many of us, including myself, we put on two pairs of tefillin to be Mekayim Nishita of Rabbeinu Tam as far as what order the parsha should be inserted into the bottom. So if we're making Rabbeinu Tam tefillin, why don't we make Rabbeinu Tam tefillin with the parshas laying down? Explains the Nain of Yehuda, the Shani say their Hanachasan, because when it comes to the question of what order the Parsha should be inserted into the bottom, over there we make sure to make a pair of Trillin like Rabbeinu Tam, those who are mocked with the Padar Rabbeinu Tam. Why? The Ikar of Haigayin, the Kamagayin, and the Kaimi Bishitas Rabbeinu Tam. Because in the context of that halacha, of that halacha, only that halacha, in the context of the Machloikis Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam, of the order of the Parshas, where Rashi says, Kaddish Vayim Kiviyach Hashma Vayim Shamaya, and Rabbeinu Tam says, Kaddish Vayim Kiviyach Vayim Shamaya Shema, in the context of that halacha, we have many Goinim who paskin like Rabbeinu Tam. So in the context of that halacha, Many of us make a separate pair of tefillin to be Mekai Mishitas Rabbeinu Tam. But not in the context of the halacha, of which direction the, the parsha should be inserted. Should they be laying down or should they be standing up? The Ga'inim don't paskin like Rabbeinu Tam when it comes to the context, when it comes to that specific halacha. So over there, we do not need a separate pair of tefillin that's made Kishitas Rabbeinu Tam. Even in Rabbeinu Tam tefillin, and if you skip a, a couple of lines down in the Shari Chubi, he says over here, This minig of having two pairs of tefillin and having a rabbi tam tefillin, This is based on Kabbalah and a zoyar. So this is not just a simple, we want to be Mekayim the sheet of Rabbeinu Tam and we'll start to make tefillin according to every sheet of the Rabbeinu Tam. No. It's only in the context of that one Machlaikis. And I'll tell you another interesting thing. The truth is that our Rashi tefillin are not Rashi tefillin, our Rabbeinu Tam tefillin are not Rabbeinu Tam tefillin. Rashi tefillin are also not Rashi tefillin. Because Rashi's tefillin didn't look like this. Rashi's tefillin did not have a titura that stuck out the way our titura does. Rashi's tefillin was one piece going straight down. It didn't have anything extending on the sides and it was sewn closed through the walls, through the side walls of the bias, going down through the bottom and up and around. You didn't have a titura sticking out. If you wanted to make tefillin, if you wanted to wear tefillin, that were being Mekayim, all the different sheets in the Rishayim, I believe I was told you would need 128 tefillin. There are those that say 64, I don't think it's right. I think it's 128. You would need 128 pairs of tefillin, and we don't do that. These are the tefillin that we wear, La Halacha. We follow Shittas Rashi. Even you should know, even somebody like me who puts on Rabbeinu Tam tefillin, Rav Moshe writes in the Tshuva, that it's not because we're Cheshish for the Shittah of Rabbeinu Tam, and we're trying to be Yoytze Shittas Rabbeinu Tam in case we're not Yoytze with Rashi. No. The Halacha is like Rashi. We're Yoytze with Rashi because we paskin like Rashi. We put on Rabbeinu Tam to be Chosh, since there is a Zashita. So we kind of like, it's almost like a, like a Zichra in Hadvarim, that we want to pay allegiance to Rabbeinu Tam's Shita as well. But not because we have a suffix if we're Yoytze with Rashi Tulan or not. 
No, we paskin like Rashi. We yoitzu with Rashi. We're not putting it on mitam sofik. It's just that. Azar shita, Rabbi Nutam, and the Iker we shine him. So how can we not put on tefillin to, to be yoitzu like that shita, Rabbi Nutam, too? And you see over here in the Shari Chuv, it's based on Kabbalah. So I thought that this was a fascinating Shari Chuv. Okay. Weiter, end of the top line in the Mechaber Sif Membov. So in Sif Mem Hey, we learned that when we put the Parshias up into the bottom, we're supposed to put them standing up, not laying down. Now that halacha is just telling us that they should be vertical rather than horizontal. Now we come to, to Sif Mem Vav. Yeah, Hagilyon Elyon Tchila. When we put the parshas up into the up into the bias, the top margin and the top line should go up first, meaning that they shouldn't be upside down. They should be right side up. Yeah, Hagilyon Elyon Tchila Shezeu Shura Elyon. The top line should go up into the bias first. The Gilyon Tachtoin and the bottom line and the bottom margin let's have Parabatim should be down towards the opening of the bias. Haga says the Rama, the Roisha Parsha Yamunach Litzad Yamin Hakoyre. The opening end of the roll. Remember, we said we roll the Parsha from the end to the beginning. The beginning should be so that the person that's facing me, Yamin Hakoyre, it should be to the right of the person that's facing me. So somebody is looking at me, right? It's it's gonna be his right, um, right his his right. So inside this bias where we have the parsha of kadesh, the open end right the open end of the roll should be on the right liamin hakoyre. Sheimbala paschan ulekaran as if if the person was approaching me. And imagine he could reach into the bias and pull out the parsha. It should be set up so that theoretically he could reach in, pull out the parsha, open it up, and start reading. Not that it's backwards and now he has to unroll it. No, it should be placed in so that the open side is right there. He can open it up and start reading. Of course, he's not going to. And of course, if he wanted to, he would have to cut open the bias and pull it out from the bottom. But it should be set up in that manner. Says the Mishtabura is cut in ratio dal. Let's add the pe. The bottom line should be down at the opening. The lava chiyamdo ois ois hafucha is neg and akoyre. If the top line would be at the bottom, if the parsha would be upside down, so now the person that's facing me, the trillin are not set up so he could read them, they're upside down. We don't want that. Ois cut in ratio test vav kil chasan. Shari Matsinu, we know that this is important. We know that the parishes are supposed to be set up so that they're facing the person who is standing opposite the Tvilin, right? Again, the person who's facing the one that's wearing the Tvilin. So I'm wearing the I'm wearing the Tvilin. I'm wearing the Tvilin on my head. You're standing and you're facing me. The parishes have to be set up so that for you, they're ready to be read from right to left. We know that's important, says the Mishnaburah. Shahare Matsinu Shesedar Hanachasim Babatam Gamkein, Mesudaram Lufne Yemin Hakoyre. Because we already learnt that the order of the parishes, Kadish Vayikim Yachish Baba Yim Shamaya, doesn't go from my right, it goes from your right. Yemin Hakoyre Shu Oime Neged Amaniach, Shi Akari Keseder. Mithila Parshas Kadish, Yemino Yvaka Parshas Vayikim Yacha, Vishar Parshas, Kimash Kazim Sim and Lamadal. And that's why the end of the parsha, meaning the open end, has to be liyamin hakoyre. It has to be to the right side of the one standing facing the person who is wearing it. Excuse me. Now we go four lines down, sif memzai, and this is why I have my little strips of uh, fake Parshius over here. Let's take it out. Okay. Says the Mechavah, Sif Mem Zayin. In Kasav Kalarba Parshius Paklaf Echad. Let's say you went ahead 
and you wrote all of the parshias of the Shel Rosh on one cloth. You forgot that you were writing a Shel Rosh. So instead of writing four parshias on four individual pieces of cloth, you wrote all four parshias on one cloth. In Kasav Kal Abar Parshias B'Klav Echad, Kishayim, it's kosher. Now, the first thing you have to understand is that when that, the first halacha that you're learning is, if you wrote all four parshas on one continuous piece of cloth, don't think that now it's puzzle and you can't cut them apart, roll them up, and put each one into an individual bias. No, it's fine. You wrote it on one cloth, now you want to cut it into four different pieces, roll each one up, and put each one into its individual bias. That's perfectly fine. That's the first thing you have to know. In Kasa, Kala, Bar, Pashis, Baklad Echad, you wrote all four Pashis for the Shal Rosh on one cloth. Kirim, it's kosher. Now we go to another halacha. Afilu ein Rebach Beinehem. That's even true if the way you wrote them is such that you cannot cut them apart. Why can't you cut them apart? Because you wrote the columns so close to each other that if you would try to cut it, then one of the parshas, the letters would be would not be mukaf gvil. Remember, we learned that all of the letters must be surrounded on all four sides by blank parchment. So let's say you wrote two columns, two amudim, so tight together that right now there is a space, but it's so tight that if you cut it, then one of the letters is going to be right up against the edge of the parchment. It's not going to be mukaf gvil. It's not going to be kosher. So now, you simply can't cut it apart. It's still kosher. How is it kosher? It's written on one cloth, you can't cut it apart, and it has to go into four bottom. So how is it kosher? So explains the, the Mechaber. Well, the Mechaber doesn't explain it very clearly, so I'll show you. Here we have a cloth, and if you notice, I wrote, the, right, I'm making a representation over here, of all four parshas on one cloth. You see there's a blank omit in the middle? I'll show you why. You could insert all four parshas on this cloth into its own bias without cutting it apart. How would you do that? Very simple. Fold it. Right? So here I'm going to take Kadesh and Vahaya Kiyiviyacha and I'm going to fold it like this. And I'm going to put Kadesh up into one bias and then I'm going to put Vahaya Kiyiviyacha up into the bias next to it. Now, it's connected at the bottom where it protrudes outside of these two bottom. It's connected at the bottom. But Kadesh goes up into one bias. Vahayuki Yaviyacha goes up into another bias. Now, here at the end, I have Shema and Vahayim Shemaya. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it. Now, I left a blank on it in here because we're going to have to fold it so that I could slide Shema up into one bias and Vahaya im Shemaya up into the last bias. So you could fold up the cloth so that it's like this. And each Parsha is going up into its own bias. And you never cut them apart. So this is what the Mechaber means. Let's read it again. Im Kasav Kalabar Parshas B'Klav Echad. If you wrote all four Parshas of the Shal Roish on one cloth, it's kosher. It's kosher even if you cannot cut them apart because there's no space. What are you going to do? You're going to fold it up like an accordion so that you could slide each parsha up into its own bias. And then the Mechaber says, but there's another requirement in this case. But there's another requirement. Even though each fold, each parsha, is going up into a separate bias, you need to make another simon that is a, a, a divide between each one of those bottom, and that is you have to put a chut, you have to put some kind of a thread, like a piece of gidin, between each one of the bottom to have an additional separation between the bottom. Why? Even though it's four bottom, it seems that since you're doing something unusual and you don't have four separate parashiyas and four separate bottom, 
you have one continuous piece of cloth going up to four bottom. You need an additional separation between the bottom, and that is, that's this chut, this thread, or this meshicha, this like strap separating between the bottom. Now, little um, FYI, we do this anyway. We put a chut hatfira, it's called. We put a chut that winds its way between all four of the bottom. Even though we have four separate pieces of cloth, we do this anyway. We'll learn about it later. Let's see in the Mishnah here. Ice cut, ice cut, and reish tez zayin. Afilu ein, retzayin alam. What does it mean? Afilu ein. It's kosher even if there isn't room between the parshias. Retzayin alam. The choshken kishiyesh revach ben a parshias. If you wrote all four parshias on one cloth, but there's space to cut them apart, sheyuchal chotcham, so that you could cut them. The yishtayir kedei hekef gvilu chalachas, and you there's enough space to cut them. So that there will be margins around all four sides. The shopper dummy, that's certainly okay. Cut them apart and put each parsha into its own bias. After the Aesaksiva Psav on the cloth echad. Even though when you wrote it, you wrote it on one cloth, doesn't matter. You could cut it up, you could write it on one cloth, cut it up, and insert each parsha into its own bias. But the Kiddush of the Bechabra is even if you can't cut it up, it's still kosher because you could fold it like an accordion and slide it up. The Kosovo Achreinim, the Achreinim, right? See, and this is the raya that I told you earlier that there's a raya that you could put in the parsha sideways, not vertical. And it's okay with the other. Why? Because what are you going to do in this case? In this case, where you're going to fold it up like an accordion. So let's take the two parshas of Kaddish Fayer Kiviyacha, right? You're going to fold it like this, and you're going to slide Kaddish up into one bias, and Vahayi Kiviyacha up into the other bias. Guess what? They're sideways, right? You can't do that this and slide it up this way. You have to turn it sideways and slide it up that way. And the Mechaber is saying that it's kosher. So you see, but the Eved, you could put in the parsha sideways. Says the Mishnah Buri here, it's like a Oh, whoops, not there. In the middle of Reish Tezayim, because of Achreinim, Afa Gav de Kishayin Revach Beinayim, even though in this case where there's no room to cut them apart, you're going to fold it like an accordion. It means you're going to put them up sideways. Each parsha is going to go into its bias, not standing up. It's still kosher. Because this requirement of sif mem hey, that they should be vertical, is only a mitzvah. It's not le'ikuva. But in this case, we need a chut or a meshicha separating between each bias with Sayyidina Loimar. The cave and Chakas of a parshias for our echad. Since you wrote all four parshias on one cloth and you're not cutting them up, you're just accordioning them and putting each parsha up into its own bias. Sarak lahafsik bechot ay meshicha ay begid. We need a thread or a strap or a sinew to form a separation between the uh, between the bottom. Kemoishanu noig in bebayis lebayis. Which we're knowing nowadays, we always make a chut or a mishicha between each one of the four batim. Kedelosis heker shabbatim uvdalim to make an extra heker that there's a separation here. Avo because of a parshias alav oiros, but really meikar adin. If you write each parsha on its own cloth, ain't tzarek losis klum ben bayis lebayis. Then really meikar adin, we don't need to place anything between each bayis. The yesh paiskim, however, there are paiskim that hold. That we always need this chut between the bottom. And that's the way we should be known. <laughs> You're going to fold it up and put each parcha into its own bias. Um, no, we didn't do that yet. Okay, now we go back into Sif Mem Zion into the Mechaber. Second line of Sif Mem Zion in the middle of the line. Shal Yad. Till now we discussed the Shal Rosh. Shal Yad. Kaisef our bar parsha is Piklav Echad. We write all four parshas on one cloth. The Gol Lo Yisam Yisam from the then we roll them up from the end to the beginning. The kirch cloth alayim, and we wrap a strip of cloth around the parsha. Usa'ar egel, and we put 
the hair of a calf around the cloth. And according to us, we do first a piece of seir shel egel, then a strip of cloth, and then another piece of seir shel egel. And then we insert it up into the bias, kemay shel roish, vertically, top on top, bottom on bottom, like by the shel roish. No mishnabur on that line. Continues the Bechaber. In Kisavam al Arba Klofim. Let's say we did the opposite. Let's say for the Shalyad, we wrote all four parshas on four different individual pieces of cloth. V'hinicham ba'arba batim. And you put it at the four bottom. You made a four bias Shalyad. Yotza. The Bechaber says, Yeyotza. But with a caveat. V'hu sheyitle, pirish yechase. But... You have to cover up the bias of the shalyad, or al arbabatim shiyunirim kibayis echad. If you made a shalyad that looks like this, you made a shalyad that look that is four batim. Yeah, you could take four individual pieces of cloth, put them up each into a separate bias. So essentially, you're making your shalyad like a shalroish. But then you have to take um, leather. And you have to cover over the bias so that it looks like a bias echad, so that it looks like one bias. Says the Mishnah Baruch cut Reish with Ches. Bar Babatim, the Chosh Kainim and Yichav a bias echad to Tvei Odif. Certainly, because again, it's really two halachas that the Mechaber said here. One Chiddush is, you're supposed to write the Shalyat of one cloth. Let's say you wrote the Shalyat on four individual pieces of cloth and you put them all into one bias. That's certainly okay, says the Mishnah Berurim Rechut Ches. There's a bigger Chiddush. If you made the Shalyat four bottom and you wrote the Shalyat on four separate pieces of cloth and you put each one into its own bias, that's also kosher. But you have to cover it up with leather so it looks like a bias echad. Says the Ramah, Haga, four lines up from the bottom. Haga. The haminig, the minig is that if you wrote the shalyad, if you wrote four individual parshiyos for the shalyad, don't take all four pieces of parchment and stick them it um, up into one shalyad and leave them as four separate parshiyos. No. The haminig, bedevek, glue them together. So that it should be considered one cloth. But the Ramah says in that case you should make sure to use kashara glue. Says the Mishvarah's cut ratio test. If you wrote four individual parshas for the shalyad and you want to put them up into one bias, glue them together. After even though you are yoytza, you should glue them together. Even though Lechatchil, you're supposed to write all four parshas of the Shalyad on one cloth. If the cipher made a mistake and he already wrote them on four separate pieces of cloth, now it's a Dievet. He wrote them already. Now, if he glues them together, that's called Lechatchil. Lechatchil, Lechatchil, you're supposed to write it all on one cloth. You made a mistake and you wrote it on four different pieces of cloth. We're not going to say that that's not considered B'dievet yet. Write new parshas. No. You already wrote them. That's considered B'dievet. Now glue them together. And you could do that with Hathila. Glue them together and put them inside. Let's say you wrote all four parshas of a shalyad on one piece of cloth. And now you may found a mistake in the fourth parsha. We know that Tefillin has to be written Kisidron. Says the Mishnah, what you could do is, take a small piece of cloth, write the last parsha, write Vahayim Shamaya on one piece of cloth, cut off the Vahayim Shamaya of the parsha that you already wrote, and glue the new Vahayim Shamaya onto the other cloth. You could do that if you look at Chilu Ulad Bika, the Zeh Hev Kidievet. I just got in Reish Chav, Devet Kasher. You should use kosher or glue. Ritzayda Laima and Mehemet Tahira. That means glue that came from a kosher species of animal. The kosher for people got them. The Zarak the mitzvah. Avaloy le ikuva. This is not le ikuva. For a mitzvah, you should make sure to use glue of a kosher animal. But if you used glue from a trafe animal, it's not le ikuva. Kevin Dadibok, Enim Akev. 
because we see over here that, strictly speaking, you don't have to glue it together. You want to put four individual parshas up into a shalyad, really you're allowed to. So you don't need to connect them. Since you don't need to glue them, the glue does not have to be from a behemoth kosher. Memele and kpeda by man metabek. We're going to stop over here with Sif Bem Ches. Thank you so much for joining me for Leaving Atayra. So to leave that she be banging like Hans Klaus for all the Rosh she said. Yeshua sir for us Panasa and she took it all as a need. We should be zeker to see the Biaska al Sedek from the Herb Yamenu Amen. It's good to be back. Be well.